Good morning everyone, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills and welcome to my channel. Hope everyone's having a pleasant morning. There is a subject I would like to touch on and that is based on the term that we keep hearing from numerous sources and that is misinformation. And Where is the idea of misinformation coming from? From my perspective, it's coming from those that want you to believe only what they are telling you. And they try to convince you that everything else you hear is misinformation. Now, this, some people think that this is a new phenomenon. It isn't, it's been going on forever. Except that they didn't have to fight for what you were led to believe. In the past we had no internet. I mean I could remember the days of no internet personally. As a matter of fact I'm one of those people that probably helped to build the internet. Me and thousands and hundreds of thousands of others who worked in that uh, industry in that field. Uh, I remember when uh, I didn't know what TCPIP stood for, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we learned quick, well, we learned. Anyway, before the internet, the days before, the days that some people don't even remember exist or weren't even born, there was a time where information came through a couple of other sources, and that was your uh, big, large newspapers your local newspapers, your uh, news, you know, your seven o'clock news or six o'clock news, I forget what time it was, it was always a certain time of day, perhaps it was six o'clock and eleven o'clock at night, you had the news on television, and you had what you believed were reliable people just bringing you cut blank news, or how can I explain it, it was not embellished, it was just matter of matter of fact, if you want to call it that. It was plainly spoken, and it was uh, not opinion. At least we were never led to believe it was an opinion. Now the newspapers were probably a little bit more opinionated because they had editorial comment content, and in the editorial columns, I think that those were mostly uh, opinion based. Whereas news articles were um, put together in such a way as to catch your attention. I think the same thing goes on today. Um, so it was hyped, it was, you know, a catchy headline. Today we have catchy thumbnails, or we try <laughs> to get people's attention. Um, you still have uh, catchy titles in all sorts of places to try and catch your attention, get you to look at what it is that that, that particular individual is presenting uh, so that they can put their point of view across and you can believe it. Now, is it factual information that you're getting? Who's to say? Uh, I think some things are factual and can be believed and then the opinions around them are nothing more than opinions. So uh, a, a situation occurs and then you've, you're given the spin on it, whatever spin the particular um, industry or government or news media wants to present. And the big difference with today with the internet is that there are thousands of sources of information. So it's not limited to a few that actually control everything. So you don't have your major newspapers that control the uh, information that you receive and you don't have your major news stations doing that anymore. And you find that that uh, your major news, your major stations, television stations are some people believe that they're nothing more than entertainment today. They're not news. They're, they're commentary, but they're not news. And most of it is just strictly opinion. And people have stopped 
believing that tr the traditional forms of uh, news gathering are actually giving you the news. And to some degree, that's valid. I would, I would say that you're getting a, a fraction of what is really going on. And the, you know, maybe 10% of it is what's actually happening. And the other 90% is the spin that they are either encouraged to place on it or being forced to place on it. Now, even television stations, news stations were, they've been doing this from the beginning. So they are probably cannot believe that people no longer believe them. And people don't believe them any longer. And the reason for that is that they're found to not really be telling the truth. Just embellishing a story to fit a, to fit a particular ideology, to fit a particular viewpoint that they want to present or that they're forced to present. Now even places such as YouTube channels like myself, what I'm expressing is an opinion and it is valid to me and it may be resonate with you and it may be valid to you but it's still just an opinion. I don't have the resources to ferret out the truth in every matter so there's no way that I can tell you that what I'm presenting is the truth and nothing but the truth so help me God. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Um, you very few people are actually uh, capable of disseminating truth. Most of it is opinion and we've all come to realize that. So I think what's happening with politicians and with the media in general is that they have been carrying on the way they have been for the last 50, 60, 70, 80 years in the same manner thinking that they can get the population to see things the way they decide to present it. And I think things have changed in a big way. Uh, and, and it continues to change. People continue to uh, uh, open their own eyes and see with their own eyes and uh, have their own points of view or follow a particular ideology much to the, you know, they have to grow up from those things as well. Uh, not to say that I haven't, I've certainly uh, fallen prey to certain beliefs and found them not to be true afterwards. I mean, you know, there is a stage when you're a young teenager that you believe certain things or you're taught certain things and some of the things that you're taught are valid but some of the things you're, you're taught are just... <sighs> whether it's your teachers or your parents they're, they're not valid. They're not valid for your life. So you have to overcome and decide to ferret out for yourself what's important to you and what's meaningful to you and not be led astray by other people's opinions and beliefs and understanding. And certainly there have been many cults that have formed and have collapsed because of beliefs in certain things that we are expecting to come to pass. And then of course there could be even a turning away when we shouldn't be turning away. So what is the truth? How do you ferret out the truth? And how do you discern the lies from the truth? Now, I'm not going to tell you that I know how to do that. I'm sure I've been taken in by lies. I'm sure I've been taken in by people in the past uh, or you've trusted where perhaps trusting wasn't the best thing that you could have done. So getting back to the old uh, misinformation, disinformation, what do you rely on? What is fact? What is true? Hmm. I think that the one thing that you can rely on is that you shall know them by their fruits meaning that you can count on people who are true to their word. Trust but verify. There are certain things that, uh, you know, other ways that, that individuals can be 
uh, caught up in things. And the COVID situation is another one of those that many people were um, led to believe that if they did not do as requested by wearing a mask, social distancing, taking the jab, they were not only hurting themselves, but they were hurting their fellow men. Now, what a guilt trip is that? So how much of that was a valid fact and how much was inter misinformation? I'll leave you to decide. I've never been one to tell people what to think, what to say, what to feel. I may tell you what I think, what I feel, and what I think might be appropriate or what I think that I should do. But in the end, we all have to make our own decisions for ourselves. We all have to ferret out the liars for ourselves. And we all have to try to determine what is a lie, what is misinformation, what is deliberate to try and take advantage of you, what is, what is factual. And it can be different for each one of us based on your own education, your own understanding, your own position. So there is never, although some people try to tell me that there's one truth, well, there's your truth, there's my truth, and then there is the truth. <laughs> now it's, it's been, <laughs> it's become even more apparent recently that um, all the media and even all the uh, social media platforms were all falling in place and trying to stick together and present a particular ideology or particular point of view. And uh, one of them has decided, nope, we're not doing this. We want freedom of speech. And they're allowing it. And of course, they're being punished for that fact as well. Now, whether that one will survive or not is, it, they probably will. On the other hand, um, it's become abundantly clear that even social media can't be trusted. So, um, even in places, in places where you're not allowed to say certain things or you're not allowed to have certain discussions, well, uh, there it is. Misinformation, I don't care what you call it, it is still misinformation because they're not allowing certain voices to be heard. But who controls what you hear? Who controls what you see? And who controls what you believe is really the battle that's going on right now. Um, it is a battle for people's minds and people's souls and people's hearts. And I don't know how that one will end up. I have no idea where that one is going, but it is a battle for your soul. Anyway, food for thought. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. Hope you found this uh, at least somewhat interesting. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.